Today we're speaking with Manoush Zumarodinia. Manoush is an Iranian-born interdisciplinary artist who makes visible the emotional and psychological reflections of her mind's eye inspired by her environment. Manoush earned an MFA in new genres from the San Francisco Art Institute and holds a master's degree in graphic design and, BA, and a BA in photography from Azad University in Tehran. She lives in the Bay Area. Manoush, it's so good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> um, I'm, I have so many questions about the, uh, specifically most recently, the, the recology mm -hmm. um, residency. But before we get into that, let's start with um, what are the what are the major themes and motivations in your practice? Um, yeah, I've been working in many different uh, ideas, but mostly uh, what I have to say about my work is about uh, um, art is life art. So it's kind of like whatever is in my daily or everyday li uh, life, I actually somehow reflect and respond to in my work. And you know, I. Uh, I'm very interested in nature and environment. I've been working with this um, them over years. And I think because of one of the reasons is that I find this platform as a safe platform that I can express my feelings. So that's why actually I use this natural environment in my uh, uh, work. But, um, uh, you know, it's, it's more about um, every day. Everything is in my theme of my work is just every day. And I use a lot of walking, you know, recording the time, space, um, uh, the different mediums and platforms and uh, way of finding a way to, you know, uh, express the feelings and finding the self through, through finding actually the self, through certain looking, um, finding the way to express that with the artwork. Um, I found a lot of um, uh, sort of secondary solace uh, looking at your the the walking posts that you shared with us um, on Instagram over the last year, and I was curious if the if the walking practice helped you uh, manage the the stress and the anxiety, perhaps the crisis we were all experiencing through COVID and quarantine. Was that something that was was that helpful to you? In oh yeah. For sure, uh, you know, originally when uh, at the first uh, step, when I started this project, yeah. that was in 2016, exactly the time that I was very stressed about my status of visa, about my situation and immigration status that I can stay or not, I was applying for a green card. Yeah. And then I was thinking using that, incorporate that, um, you know, walking as a practice art. Yeah. And, uh, you know, over time that I've been doing, it's been very helping in terms of really relieving and finding a way of communicating and seeing ob observing your environment mm -hmm. through that walk which is really helpful especially during the this past year that not many com you know community involved so you're not in crowds and you are not a bit like for me that I, I live by myself I don't have most of my families are living in Iran and you don't have that community that you're more close so it's like was so isolated and the walking was amazing because I normally, yeah. uh, before then, I never had a time to just walk every day one hour to just like, you know, contemplate, you know, so yeah. luxury and privilege. Yeah. But this time was very good that I was able to go for a walk, make myself, and because you don't, you can go and at the time that, uh, during the time that they let us be out, but just like isolated by, by yourself, like one yeah. person, not couple yeah. and then it was very helpful to think about um the fear the you know anxiety that i had in, in my life coming out through um the videos that actually i've never i didn't make any uh project based on my experience yet i have a bunch of things that i have to go through i have never had time because it was back-to-back -back things to do yeah. um but yeah it was very helpful uh, using the walking yeah and were you walking primarily sort of around where you live or were you going yeah out? most of the mm, uh, walks were around my neighborhood uh, but then I moved also and then again was around another neighborhood but it's um it's been more closer I guess it's so where I could get like 20 minutes or 15 minutes by walk to uh outer space and mostly natural environment like places that is closer to the uh, bay shore or 
somewhere um, on the mountain, like uh, the White Clay Canyon. So it's kind of like a place that I really can um, contemplate in nature and enjoy, you know, um, this uh, some sort of like um, presence that you have and time that you spend in this yeah. amazing majesty. Uh, it was the it area. beautiful and I look forward to it. I don't know, I, I don't remember if you posted every single day or just when you did post, um, I remember just uh, taking the moments to to watch it and just thinking it was just an extraordinary gift that you gave us who are following you um, just that by extension that peace of mind that you were that you were sharing with us it because it could be a very um, solitary experience mm -hmm. something meditative something that you are doing for yourself to you know, practice self-care and to and to just look after yourself as much as you could in the last year, but that you chose to share that with us was is is really very generous. So no, thank you. Thank you. I don't I, I'm glad it was helpful. Others, but for myself, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm glad to hear actually I got a lot of feedback from many people who were sending me, messaging me that they enjoying what I post. And I think one of the things for me it was the time and I think I felt the reason, you know, you always go walking and you probably, if you are a photographer, you're going to have a, some sort of like vision that you want to capture, you do some sort, but sharing what, what you see, it's a little bit like you curate and you select. And I thought those selection for me was the time that I really felt something different. And I wanted to share that. And that's, I'm glad that I got the same, you know, response from people that they were communicating. Yeah. Oh, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was wonderful. Um, okay. So you mentioned you moved, you moved uh, in the last year, uh, but you've had, you've been in the Bay Area for quite a while now. What I moved here in 2009. In 2009. Okay. So that's almost what, 12 years. At this 12 point. years. Yeah. Okay. So um, as we're thinking about uh, SWANA and community, um, what was your experience of meeting other um, people who, sort of, who come from the Swana region? Was that something that you sought out when you first arrived here? Yeah, actually, that's a very good question. And I was thinking over when I passed this question, uh, I was thinking, oh, I don't have that. I don't know. What am I going to talk about? I think there is reason, actually. Yeah. Um, and I think I was just thinking more why I don't have that connection with that community. And I think one of the reasons is when I came to United States, I think I'm very lucky that I have the privilege of immigration because so many people are, they have to, they're seeking for asylum, but I'm so, uh, you know, uh, grateful that I don't have that. I, I was, I had the privilege that I make a choice to stay yep. here. It wasn't mandatory so that I, have to but one of the reason actually I came I was for sure um, I had personal reason to come but uh, one of the things for me was open up myself to a broader culture and people that I've never seen before yeah. and my understanding was more through um, people who are coming from this same region we have more in common we understand better each other because we have so similarity. There are so many cross paths in cultural way, um, you know, habits, everything, everyday life yeah. that um, we understand each other better. And I thought my choice was that I'm going towards people who don't know me, yeah. people who are super different. Yeah. And not have been successful because some people already actually don't want to communicate because I'm so different from them. Yeah. But I've been pushing myself and putting myself in a position that I can find the people who are so different. Even though I actually have been looking for people who like for, I'm interested in environment. So I probably have been searching for people like more communicating with a group of women Eco, women eco artists dialogue is a community that I've been involved but yeah. I, I have some you know uh, missionaries missions that I'm really interested in and things that I I admire and want to follow so I've been looking for people like that uh, not that I'm going to go and find somebody who's too totally but I'm saying 
<laughs> not it, it, not exactly like people who come here because I, I didn't know my English was not good at all it's still not good but I'm just trying my best yes. but you know I just uh, you, you, when you don't have the language so you have hard time to communicate and become part of the community yes. so it was difficult for me to have these challenges and uh, but I pushed myself and tried not to go to Iranian community because I thought that's going to be something is not going to help me to grow because they are the same as me. They probably have the same issue that I have. Yeah. And I was looking more for people who don't know anything and who, yeah. or they accept me because they talk to me yeah. and they are interested to know about my Iranian background, even though that might, some people might just find it that people are taking advantage of your culture and your ethnicity. And, but I think it, it has you know good and bad things but at the same time that was my um, original idea that yes I'm going to push myself further try to work with people and go through community that it's less or familiar to myself and I've learned it all I've seen so many different things I've never ever would have seen yeah. if I would have stayed in those you know close um that narrowly defined, narrowly defined cultural or or uh, cultural space, so to speak. Yeah. Oh, so so we're thinking about um, community and Swana, and but it sounds like you were you you are you have a presence, not just in the in the Swana community, but like you've really pushed yourself mm -hmm. to to find connections, to find you know professional personal connections, like outside of the the comfort zone that is. Yeah. You know, uh, either just strictly Iranian culture or Swana broadly defined Swana cultures. That's, uh, I mean, and have you felt? Do you think you were uh, just well received by the people that you encountered? Have you been, hopefully, embraced by these by the various communities that you have approached? I think so. Yeah, I think so, Rola. I think it's been. Uh, you know, there's always challenges in our life for sure. And there are some times that maybe you don't get response or you don't get that welcoming or you don't get that. But I think at some point, at least you brought up something, you have been working with people, at least they know a little bit more about your country, which people are thinking that you have the, everyone's killing each other. You know, it's like yes. that violence that, uh, you know, the, idea of how an Iranian Muslim would look like. Yeah. It, I, I think that I have an impact for that, at least. I think this is my approach, maybe not, but, <laughs> but I hope, uh, but I think people, I have a really bond with great people and I know so many people that are amazing and I very appreciate um, working with them and, you know, appreciate um, with them understanding me and giving me some you know, opportunities in many ways to have my voice out, you know. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so this next question, it, it, it's uh, interesting because it, it both addresses um, this topic of resources that we're talking about for um, Zemin Project, but also directly goes to uh, the work in the most recent residency that you participated in at Recology. So when I say um, resources, what does that mean for you, both in terms of um, your community, uh, the, the the full, not just the Swana community, but everyone that you and you know the way that you encounter that within community settings, and then also resources as something of what you encountered through your recology, um, your artist residency as well, which I which I understand it didn't happen last, it didn't happen in 2020, but it did happen in 2021. Is that right? Was it rescheduled? Is that what happened? Uh, it was partially 2020, but then it stopped, and then we started uh, in July, just okay. a couple of weeks. Yeah, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Excellent. And you're not. It's not finished just yet. You have. No, no, no. I'm still in the resident, and uh, it's uh, hopefully we can have an exhibition at by the end of September 24th. I think. Oh my goodness. Um, all right. So let's so let's look at that. The first part of that question. When you think of resources in terms of community, in terms of uh, yeah, let's, let's focus on community. What does that, what does that term, um, wh what do you think of when you hear the word resources? Uh, 
you know, I don't know how to answer that question, but I can explain in a way that hopefully it answers um, yeah. well. I think uh, par partially being from the um, other or just like not, you know, American or whatever, yeah. I've never had that resources, but I think um, going to school have been very helpful and I found a lot of, uh, you know, resources through school, learn about so many things. I've never knew about artist residency before I moved here. So it's like learning that that's the opportunity that you can go to places and create. And I was like, not understanding what does that mean? You know, back then, even though I had my master from Iran, so I've never had encountered because, you know, back then, of course I had internet, but back then that was not open to everyone. And it was like future later on was more, uh, uh, accessible for everybody it was harder like for so many things so I'm saying like people who have educated or who have been uh, having ties with American or European or other you know uh, culture probably they have already known but I can say that I was the, was the first time maybe in my family at least that I had never had that education never knew about all this stuff just learned when I moved here and I tried so hard to learn about these resources so it was like coming, going to school, the, you know, education has been very helpful. Yeah. And I've been always, you know, trying so hard. You know, I tell people, people say like, yeah, you're always in different residencies. You get all this. I say, you know, I work hard uh, and I apply, for example, 20 applications and I get one. Yeah. And because you apply for 20, so at least one just going to happen. And, you know, because I don't know how to time manage. So sometimes they are just back to back. They are like at the same time. So you're looking at dates sometimes like, what am I just doing you know you never know but I just try and some most of the times yeah. actually it's not like accepted sometimes you're alternate but I say always yes and then I accept that but anyhow as far as resources so I'm saying there are many out there for sure but just being uh, from the different culture I think you have to hard work care and I think what I've been doing trying to find a ways how other people do and how how, how is the way that you can, as an artist, support and find those resources to use it? And, uh, you know, uh, as far as the Recology goes, I learned about this program through Eco Art Matters class, which was like in 20, uh, actually 2010, 29. Actually, that was the first year that I came here. I learned about this program, 2009. So yeah, the, through the class, they had these, um, uh, what do you call it, um, tours that you could go and learn about the ecology. And then I learned about the artist program. So I was like fascinated. I, but at the time I was like, what am I going to do? I don't know. I wasn't, uh, I'd never have, uh, you know, um, had the uh, self-esteem that I'm able to make art there as an artist, but I think over time, so I try hard and I've been listening and looking at things. Yeah. Um, and I think that's about the college. And what else did you ask about? Oh, no, I think that that sums it up uh, perfectly. Just that um, uh, the, the resources, the, the way that you encountered that, it was um, through, I'm guessing, not trial and error, but like you were constantly like applying and applying. Once you understood that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that there are so many options as far as um, artist residencies, both mm -hmm. in California and outside, yeah. of, and treating that, treating that, treating those opportunities as resources to, you know, to broaden your professional network and your personal network and just all the ways in which one can um, uh, flourish in those, in those situations. Yeah. And, and also, as you mentioned, like in the, the, the application process where it's 20 applications, 25, however many that you produce in a year that maybe, hopefully, one will say yes, one will come back and say yes. Um, uh, but the, in the process, like cultivating that sense of, um, as you mentioned, self-esteem, and and through all of that, getting to know just you know what what opportunities are out there, and understanding, mm -hmm. identifying those opportunities as as resources. So that's a, I mean, it's a, it's a really thoughtful, beautiful way to 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 approach all of this. Yeah, and one of the things a uh, role that I was I was going to add, like he's um, not getting. I always never, you know, I think. Uh, just not getting accepted but I've never let rejection put me down so I've been trying I'm one of I don't know how long I'm going to do it but I think I just no matter what if I get accepted or not I'm just going to keep applying and uh, there are certain things that I know that uh, you know you 
not enough like we're one thing that you know that that's not going to happen but i'm saying just like more possible thing i think i don't let them put me down that hey my work is not good no it's maybe didn't find the right way so that's i don't try to i just keep up hope let's say that way <laughs> i'm hopeful hopeful for life <laughs> um well it's been such a, a lovely lovely conversation i can't wait to see you in person the next time um but the last question is um what are you thinking about right now uh, i've been thinking a lot about this um you know environment how we are this catastrophe that is happening it's like i don't know how i'm gonna bring it in my work but i think one of the things that i'm so worried about water issue about like fire that is happening you know this yeah. global warming that these are things that are more now um you know, people have encountered and understanding that because they're so close to us back then you would hear that that place has got fire you just like okay fire it's just gonna be okay but now that i notice like that from Past year that we realized how much is affected it's so hard even to breathe, yeah. go out. So yep. these are even just not having that impact as like losing your home, losing your loved one. You have not been impacted uh, directly, but I think um, it's been very uh, real and mostly water because now uh, in uh, my country that I things that I hear is so so bad. They sometimes they caught the electricity back in Iran. I know we have some issues in terms of um, other political problems, but um, the sanction that's happening, the government that is not running perfect or, or you know, not good governmental kind of like rich and yeah. but also um, like electricity is cut off, water is cut off, like it's so important, like think about these resources that we are losing. So it's more like what I'm thinking now. And one of the things that I've been uh, maybe earlier, I didn't maybe mentioned, but I want to mention, I use nature as kind of like contemplation, but, uh, but also a ritual that it helps my uh, think about that perhaps with this meditation, mm -hmm. perhaps with this sort of like thinking about this concept and thinking about these issues, yeah. maybe it helps me to be hopeful and maybe I can do a change. I'm not sure how much because we were talking about a couple of artists and back a couple of days ago yeah. that thinking about how do you think the artists are activists and i said like you know artists never do things i think they 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 address issues they talk about problems which they yeah. hope that it's going to bring a lot of information but not necessarily i have a solution because if you're talking about solution art is not giving solution but thinking about it and i think Th that's that brings like this ritual yeah. it's very helpful to you know, you know just the, the things that how I, I approach it i think that's kind of like mentally helpful and yeah. mentally you know hopeful absolutely no i think that's uh maybe the most articulate and direct way that i've ever heard it described like what how artists or how art functions it's not that artists necessarily seek an answer or seek to give you know, solutions or answers because far too often like we just don't personally have the resources <laughs> the financial resources to do so um but that there is the that spark of idea there is something that uh those of us who are consumers who are looking at this and thinking about how do we how do we start to address these global this you know global catastrophe that's unfolding in front of us and around us um how do we start to think about this and how do we start to address it and art is one of the most relatable i think for many people relatable ways into that thoughtful space so it's i think you i think you hit it right on the head there so that's perfect thank you so much for this interview it was such a great opportunity to speak with you and thank you for um just wanting to to be a part of the main project we're, we're really so fortunate thank so you. Wanted to thank, thank you for having me and including me in this group yeah yeah absolutely all right um thanks everyone for tuning in and we'll see you here the next time bye